Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony. In our next lesson in our advanced exporting tutorials, I thought I would take a look at how to set up exporting eight channels of audio. Now, why would you ever want to export eight channels of audio? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. In many cases these days, a lot of the stuff you're going to deliver is going to be digitally, whether it's via FTP or whether it's via hard drive. If you worked on anything from a 30 second commercial all the way up to an hour long show, in most cases when you deliver it to the client, you're going to be delivering a single video file. Now especially these days in the days of surround sound audio where you're going to have six channels of surround sound and two channels of stereo on tracks seven and eight, you're going to want to be able to export a video file that's going to contain the video and those eight channels of audio. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to set up both just a standard audio export with no video and how you're going to set up an eight channel export with video. And you're going to see how you're going to set these up and save them as presets so that you can use them any time you want. Okay, short introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Symphony. Obviously, for all my Mac friends, that is a Command and Tab. And what we're going to do is just open our sequences bin here. I'm simply going to right click. We're going to say Import because I need to import some music here. I'm going to import some music from Rampant Design Tools, Dirty South, Hip Hop Music Collection. And I'm just going to select some 30 second tracks here. It doesn't even really matter what the audio sounds like because we just need some audio to put into our timeline here. And you can see that audio imports into Media Composer and Symphony lightning quick. And remember, these are actually new pieces of media that are being created. We're not actually linking to anything here. And there we go. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to create a new sequence. Now, most people think that I'm going to come over, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new sequence or I'm going to navigate up to clip and say, of course, new sequence, shortcut being control, shift and N. But I'm actually going to do none of those. What I'm going to do to create a new sequence is to simply select the clip that I want to drop in first and I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here into my timeline. I can actually drag it right over here into the window as well, but I'm going to drag it and drop it right down here into my timeline. Now before I do that, I need to make sure that I'm actually looking at my timeline because right there with the toggle source recording timeline, what I'm actually looking at is the contents of the preview window. You'll see if I bring the clip up here into the preview window, I can now see it. What I want to see is actually the record window. So what I'm going to do now, like I said before, is I'm going to take this clip, I'm going to drag it down here into the sequence window or into the timeline window and you'll see as soon as I do, the icon has now changed into the segment editor, the insert segment editor. And you'll see I can actually bring it up here and drop it in here as well, but what I can do is just simply let it go and there we go, we now have that clip in our timeline. Now what I'm going to do is simply press Control and U on the Windows machine, Command and U on the Mac just to create some new layers here. There we go. And I'm going to leave the video track here for now. That's fine. We're going to get to exporting the video in just a second. So what we're going to do now is simply take the rest of these clips here and I'm going to hold Control and Windows Command on the Mac to make sure they snap to the start of the timeline here. There we go. There we go. Very nice. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to come down to the end of the shortest clip here. I'm going to hold Control and Windows Command on the Mac mark an endpoint there and we're just going to remove everything at the end of this timeline because I just want to make sure that I have just the contents of all the clips here. I don't mind if they're cut off at the end here. Uh, just the contents that fill the entire sequence. Now you'll see right now I have my audio waveforms turned on. Now obviously a few ways to turn your audio waveforms on. Two easiest ways, simply navigate to the fast menu, navigate up to audio data and there it is right there. Or for me, if you like shortcuts, which I always do, I actually created a shortcut for the waveforms right here. Now remember to create that shortcut you're going to need the command palette up here in tools, command palette right here and you're going to want to do a menu to button reassignment and you're going to want to navigate again right back down here and up to audio data and select that waveform so that it can be mapped to any one of the keys here in your composer window. Okay. So let's talk about exporting this audio. Now, like I said, in the first example we're going to use, we just want to export eight channels of audio. What we also want to do is create two presets, one that's going to have video and one that's not going to have any video. So 
What we're going to do first of all is we'll do the WAV file that has no video. Now, for me, what I normally like to do is I normally like to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire timeline. Now, why would I want to go about doing that? Well, because when I come into export and I right click inside the sequence window and I say export, now you'll see right now I'm set to the stereo wave preset, but that's okay. Symphony always remembers whatever the last preset that you use and it's always going to use that and it's going to populate the export settings with that when you say export. But since we're going to be creating a new one, it's really irrelevant. So what I'm going to do is come into the options and inside of options, what I want to do is make sure that I'm using a WAV file, which I am. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to do a direct output. Now, by selecting direct output, what I'm going to do now is say save as. We're going to call this 8 channel WAV file. I'm now simply going to say OK. I'm going to say save. Let's head to the desktop here. Now the big question is, and I mentioned this before, why did I actually go in and mark the entire timeline and why did I make sure I have all of my tracks selected? Well, the reason I did, if I come back into options, you'll see at the top here that I have two boxes checked, use marks, use enabled tracks. Well, use marks means use the range that you have selected by an in and an out point. Use enabled tracks, fairly self-explanatory, use the tracks that I have enabled or disabled here to decide what is going to be exported. I always like to work this way because it's a very visual and it's, it's very much one of those what you see is what you get methods of exporting. If I have eight channels of audio but I only have two of them selected, only those two channels are going to get exported in whatever range I have selected. Again, you don't need to work this way, but like I said, for me, I always like to have you know precise control over exactly what I'm doing in my timelines. That's why I like to have these options selected. Okay, so what we're going to do is simply say save because remember we already have the 8 channel WAV file saved as a preset and we'll just call this yay 8 channels. We're simply going to say save. You'll see in a couple of seconds here there's our WAV file. I'm simply going to right click and I'm going to link to AMA file here. I'm going to come here and I'm simply going to say open. You'll see there's our WAV file right there. What I'm going to do is just clear the monitor here just so that we're not getting confused going back and forth. You'll see now that I have the eight channels that we exported. I'm going to flip over here and you're going to see now there are all of the eight channels of audio ready for me to play back and do with whatever I want to do with. Now, the question is where would I ever use something like this? Well, believe it or not, in a lot of cases I actually deal with this type of thing on a daily basis at my job at MyJo. What happens is a client will send us a video file that has eight channels of audio with it. And this, believe it or not, is the best way to go about exporting your show. Let's say you had a surround sound show with two stereo channels on seven and eight, and you needed to export a commercial or, like I said, a show to send to a station to put on the air. Well, a lot of people will put it on a tape, but some people will put the file on a hard drive and send it that way. Well, this is a great way to be able to export just a single file that has eight channels of audio on it, your surround sound and your stereo. So this way there's no confusion when the file gets to the end destination exactly what is going on. Everything is right there. Now, how do you verify this before you go about importing it or, you know, AMA linking to it? Well, there's a very easy way to do it right from within QuickTime. What I'm going to do is just minimize Media Composer. I'm simply going to right click on the file and say open with and I'm going to select QuickTime player here. We'll give QuickTime a second open here. What I'm going to do is navigate up to Window, and I'm going to come down to say Show Movie Properties. You'll see there is the soundtrack right there. I'm just going to say Show Me the Audio Settings, and you can see there are my eight channels of audio that I can verify. So let's say I needed an assistant to come in and just verify that you know the last 50 files that I received just have eight channels of audio on them. I don't really worry about what's on them right now, but just the fact that they have them, QuickTime is a great way to get in and be able to verify that, like I said, very quickly and very easily. Okay, now let's just hop back into Media Composer slash Symphony here. And like I said, we now have a preset for doing an eight channel audio export. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to close this. I'm going to delete my AMA link to here, which is just obviously deleting the link to the file on my desktop. And let's just create a new title here. I'm just going to say new title. Give the title tool a second to open here, and we're just going to type in audio is awesome with a big exclamation mark. And of course, why not? Let's use my favorite font here, Impact. Uh, not even Impact because I didn't type it quick enough. Impact. There we go. Perfect. Okay. We'll just stretch this out. Awesome. Okay. 
We're going to save this title. Audio is awesome. What's even more awesome is the fact that I have lowercase a's at the start. So why don't we just leave that? I'm fine with that. We'll close the title tool here. And I'm just going to take this, drop it into my timeline. So now let's set up a preset to export video and audio. So what we're going to do is again just hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire timeline, including video. Again, we're going to right click. We're going to say export. What we're going to do here is we can just use the same 8-channel WAV file preset that's on uh, that's a standard. When it, like I said, when I come back in, it's always going to default to whatever the last thing I exported was. I'll just say Options here. Now, obviously, we're not going to use audio. We want to use a QuickTime Movie. Now, in this case, I'm going to have same as source, but I want to have video and audio. Now, again, you're going to want to come in, set your color levels to RGB or 601, depending on the type of files you've been working with. And you're going to want to make sure that you set your display aspect ratio to be correct. And again, where things are most important is under audio format, you're going to want to make sure that you have direct out selected. Now, once you have that selected, what we're going to do is we're going to say save as. We're going to call this QT, same as source, eight channels. Okay. I'm going to say save, and we'll call this eight channels video. I'm going to say go. Now remember, this is HD that we're working with here, so the export's actually going to be pretty quick. Considering this is 720p, there it is on the desktop. Now again, what I'm going to do before I do any link to or importing, we're going to say open with, we're going to say QuickTime. Give QuickTime a second to open this here. We're going to come to Window, we're going to come to the Movie Properties. You're going to see that we have video, we have a soundtrack right there, and of course we have time code. I can simply select soundtrack, say audio settings, and you'll see that what's happened is, is that these channels have actually been tagged as left, right, center, sub, left, surround, right, surround, stereo, left, and stereo, right. Now that's okay. You know, for the purposes of what we're doing, it doesn't really matter. I, like I said, you know, this could have been a surround sound file that I was sending to, you know, a client or a station. So I'm going to leave this the way that it is. What we're going to do now is come back into Media Composer. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say import. Again, we're actually going to, you know, let's cancel that because we want to do an AMA link to, not an import. Let's select our eight channels with video, say open, drag it over here into the preview window. Let's preview that audio file. And what we now have is video and our eight channels of discrete independent audio. So setting this up again, very simple. And the best part is, is that once you've set that up and you have your presets, you can see I have my video. Uh, with eight channels export right there, and then I also have my eight channel WAV file just audio export. So once I set them the first time, I can set them and forget them. So I hope this tutorial has shown you why setting up export settings for eight channels of audio, whether it's just audio only or audio and video, is going to be an imperative part of your workflow if you're delivering content to stations for them to put on the air, especially if that's surround sound. It's a great trick to always have in your back pocket so you can pull it out and use it and amaze and wow your clients every time. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.